Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to another question and answer video. This is physiology question of MRCS. Here the question, a 23 years old woman present with severe headache, photophobia and naked stiffness. A lumbar puncture is undertaken and cerebrospinal fluid is sent for microscopy and culture. Culture shows a growth of nice area meningitis. What is likely to be predominant cell type in the cerebrospinal fluid? So we have to find out the cell type present in the cerebrospinal fluid. In a case of a patient, that means a woman, who presents severe headache, photophobia, and neck stiffness? That means it is the sign of meningitis. So, in case of 23 years old woman, she developed meningitis, and in this case, lumbar puncture was done and CSF collected, and the microscopy and culture done, and the growth is Neisseria meningitis. And we have to find out the cell which is present in case of Neisseria meningitis. And we know the Neisseria meningitis it is a bacteria. So we have to find out a cell which is usually present in the CSF in case of Neisseria meningitis or in case of bacteria. Here are the options. Options are eosinophils, basophils, macrophage, lymphocyte, and neutrophil. So we have to find out a cell who is usually present in case of Neisseria meningitis or in case of bacterial meningitis meningitis in cerebrospinal fluid. So this is about the cerebrospinal fluid. First of all, in case of bacterial meningitis, neutrophils are typically present in the cerebrospinal fluid. So this point is very, very important. Then second one here, we can see in case of viral meningitis, lymphocytosis is said to be predominant. That means in case of viral meningitis, lymphocyte is more. In case of bacterial meningitis, neutrophil is more. So this two point is very, very important, not only for MRCS, but also for all type of exam. Then here we can see clinically there can be overlap with neutrophilia occurring in some cases of viral meningitis. So in case of viral meningitis, uh, typically lymphocyte increase, but sometimes there may be neutrophil count increase. Then here we can see in case of bacterial meningitis, neutrophilia can be attenuated by administration of antibiotic. So if we administer antibiotic and then we collect the cerebrospinal fluid, there may be neutrophilia may be absent, may be normal neutrophil in the CSF. Because when we introduce the antibiotic, the antibiotic kills the bacteria and bacterial action on the brain tissue is uh, reduced and the inflammation reduced and then neutrophil count reduced. So in case of cerebrospinal fluid collection, uh, we should collect the cerebrospinal fluid before starting the antibiotic to prevent the attenuation of the neutrophilia. So it is now clear, I think, that the bacterial meningitis, neutrophil, uh, to prevent attenuation of neutrophilia, uh, we should collect the cerebrospinal fluid before giving the antibiotic. And this phase is very, very important. And again, in case of bacterial meningitis, neutrophil increase. In case of viral meningitis, lipocyte increase. And we should collect the cerebrospinal fluid of CSF before starting antibiotic. Here we can see the CSF fills the space between the arachnoid matter and pia matter. That means the cerebrospinal fluid it is located within the subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space. Then between the arachnoid matter and between the pia matter. So the CSF it is located between the arachnoid matter and pia matter that means it's in the sub arachnoid space of the brain tissue as well as in the spinal cord here we can see the total volume of csf in the brain is about 150 ml so it is a amount we should remember that 150 ml of cerebrospinal fluid usually present within the brain and here we can see approximately 500 ml is produced every day and it is also reabsorbed into the blood every day and it is produced by the ependymal cell of the choroid plexus about 70% and also from the blood vessel 
very minimum which is 30 percent and it is reabsorbed via the arachnoid granulation and project into the venous sinuses and finally reaching the systemic circulation so cerebrospinal fluid it is located in the subarachnoid space and normal volume is 150 ml and uh, on day it is produced 500 ml and most of them are produced from the ependymal cell of the choroid plexus which is 70 percent and rest of the 30 percent from the blood vessel and it is reabsorbed into the venous sinuses and reaches the systemic circulation via the arachnoid granulation. Now see the circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid it is uh, produce the choroid plexus in the lateral ventricle and from the lateral ventricle the CSF enter into the third ventricle via a foramen which is known as the foramen of Munro. So through the foramen of Munro, the cerebrospinal fluid it reaches into the third ventricle from the lateral ventricle. Cerebral aqueduct, which is also known as aqueduct or sylvius, it conducts the cerebrospinal fluid from the third ventricle so to the fourth ventricle. So these two points, one is the foramen of Munro, another one is aqueduct of sylvius this two line is very very important then in the subarachnoid space by the promen mazendi and lusca so this four marked area is very very important first of all promen of monro second one aqueduct of sylvius third on the promen of mazendi and promen of lusca and it reaches the subarachnoid space uh, midline Foramen, which is foramen mazendi and to lateral foramen known as foramen of olosca. Then it is finally reabs in, reabsorbed into venous system via the arachnoid, glue, arachnoid granulation into the superior sagittal sinus. And now composition, the cerebrospinal fluid, it is composed of larger part of glucose it is 50 to 80 milligram per year because we know the fast and most delicious food for the brain is glucose so there should be more more glucose in the cerebrospinal fluid which is the most important necessary and favorite food for the brain so this is the glucose concentration then here we can see protein concentration it is typically low than that of the glucose then the RBC or red cell usually deal with the cerebrospinal fluid and white blood cell it is 0 to 3 per cubic millimeter because we know the white blood cell it is the defensive system in our body so any organism reaches the brain it is killed by this white blood cell who is present in the cerebrospinal fluid. So it is now ready that in case of Neisseria meningitis, that means it is the bacterial meningitis. In case of bacterial meningitis, there is neutrophil count is increased. Then here we can see the lymphocyte. Lymphocyte increase in case of the viral meningitis. And basophil, eosinophil, macrophages, they are not related in this condition. So in case of lumbar puncture, we get the neutrophil in case of bacterial meningitis. And this condition is the Neisseria. Thank you for